so there's plenty of interesting stuff that we still have to do and um, I'll show you uh, what we're going to do in the finished rig so in this finished rig uh, you have this control here uh, and moving it up and down as you move it up the foot rotates forwards around the ball of the foot and as you move it down the foot rotates back around the heel of the foot that's really useful for um, walk cycles so we're going to put that into our rig so we want to uh, capture the motion of rotating forwards around the ball of the foot and then back around the heel of the foot uh, you can do that using IPO drivers but I think the easiest way to do it is by using action constraints so we're going to capture the uh, that animation that movement in an animation in an action and then we're going to play it back on this bone and on this bone using an action constraint on both of those so the first thing to do is to create that animation so I'll go into the animation view here and uh, just organize the viewport a bit press Z to be in uh, wireframe view now we're going to go to the dope sheet view here and uh, the dope sheet window and choose uh, the action editor from this now you can see that currently there's no action uh, applied so we're going to create a new one and we're going to change the name of that from action which is the default to foot roll now there are three positions where the foot will need to be keyframed and um, uh, they are uh, rotated forwards around the ball of the foot and rotate uh, level and thirdly rotated back around the heel of the foot now to form a nice basis for that animation we're going to add uh, these we're going to add keyframes uh, in the default pose and we'll need three of those one for each of those positions that I just mentioned so we'll press we'll select those the bones that we're going to animate press I to insert a keyframe and choose rotation and uh, that just inserted a keyframe on frame 1 there uh, you can see the first keyframes here and also here uh, then we'll go up to frame 11 by pressing the up arrow and then choose insert again and insert rotation and then you can see the second foot keyframe there and here then we'll go up again to frame 21 I'm pressing the up arrow to advance 10 frames and then press insert rotation and because we've still got these two bones selected we've inserted keyframes on those two bones at the three times that we've just been at so at frame 1, frame 11 and frame 21 but currently nothing happens in that animation so we're going to go to the first frame and we're going to select just the heel bone now and rotate backwards 90 degrees around the heel and then insert a rotation keyframe then we're going to go forwards to all the way to the end of the animation at frame 21 and select the um, the tarsal target and rotate forwards 90 degrees around the ball of the foot and insert another rotation keyframe and now you can see when I play this animation back and forwards we've basically captured the motion that we want uh, it's not quite what we want because these uh, curves are very uh, smooth at the moment and that, actually usually that's what you want but here we don't we want uh, to go to interpolation mode with all of the keyframes selected and choose linear and now we have clearly defined motion which is just what we want now we're going to play this action back on these two bones using action constraints so we don't want uh, the the action to be played uh, in the timeline so in order to prevent that we're going to delete this link here and then as we scrub back and forwards the foot stays where it is now we have to uh, set up the action constraints so we'll go into the default view that we were in before and um, in order to control these action constraints we're going to need to use a bone to drive the animations similar to 
this bone in the finished rig. So I'll create that bone now. Uh, I'm going to tap, press tab to go into edit mode and then shift D and G to grab and then rename this bone as foot roll. Now it's currently the child of the overall foot control. You can see this line joining it and that's just what we want so I'll leave it as it is. So now I'll apply the first action constraint to this bone. Go add constraint and choose action. Now the target. This is the bone that's going to drive the animation and we want it to be this bone. So it's in the armature and it's called foot roll. So we'll choose the armature and then the bone is foot roll. The action is the action we just made which is called foot roll. Now transform channel location. Uh, this is the channel which is going to drive this constraint and to find that out we need to go to the bone which is uh, which we've chosen to drive this constraint with and then we'll turn on the uh, transform gizmo and choose normal as the orientation. Uh, we can see that y is the direction up and down so we'll choose the uh, y location from this transform channel menu location y. Now this is the start of the action which was at frame 1 the end of the action which is at frame 21 and this minimum and maximum refers to the amount of travel that you want this control bone to take as it plays back the action. So we'll go here to the action constraint and we'll choose the minimum as minus 0.1 and the maximum as 0.1 blender units and we want the uh, target, the space that the target to be evaluated in we need that to be local space. So now when I select this control bone and pull down, or when I pull up, it um, plays the animation and lifts the foot up off the ground by rotating it, by rotating the heel, by rotating the ankle rather, around the ball of the foot. Now we'll go through a very similar process for this heel bone, which is the other bone which was animated in that action. So we'll add a constraint, choose action constraint, target, armature, foot roll. The action is called foot roll. And now you can see it's already playing a part of that action on this heel bone. But it's playing the wrong section at the moment. So we'll finish setting up the constraint and it should set it back to how it should be. Uh, location Y is the driving channel. Uh, the action started on frame 1 and ended on frame 21. The minimum the driving channel should be minus 0.1 and the maximum should be 0.1 and it should be evaluated in local space and there it's gone back to how it should be and when we select this driving uh, target bone uh, you grab it and it rotates back around the heel as we pull down and forwards around the ball of the foot when we put pull up and that's basically the exact same control that we had in our um, finished rig so that's really useful. Basically now the rig has all of the functionality that we need. However, uh, there are lots of bones here which don't do anything useful anymore because their um, their functionality is being accessed through other bones like this. So we need to go through and tidy up this rig and remove the uh, extraneous controls or at least hide them. We can also do some cosmetic things to this rig to make it look prettier and uh, more like this rig. So we'll also do those things in the next video. See you soon.